let's talk about the deriving construct in Haskell. The deriving construct in Haskell is a convenience feature offered to you by the Haskell language that uh, allows you to um, instantiate a number of type classes rather quickly when you've just defined a new data type. And that is very useful in practice because there is a tension, right? If you have a domain in which you're developing an application, then in principle, it's very easy in Haskell to define your own data types for it. And that is good because your own data types are much more meaningful and they're much more um, closely tailored to what you actually need than uh, sort of standard data types could possibly be. Right? Uh, they're much easier to understand in a particular context. On the other hand, though, as we have seen, a fresh data type starts out with absolutely no operations. The only thing that you can do is you can pattern match on the constructors. You cannot even type a value into GHCI and get its result printed back. You cannot even compare two values for equality. Now we have seen that there are all these type classes and we have seen that it is easy to define instances for them, but it's nevertheless work. And if you had to do all this basic groundwork by hand, it would discourage you possibly from defining your own minor variations of certain data types. Right, and uh, and that's that's not that great. I mean, you, um, if if uh, if you're on the one hand, the language makes it easy to define new data types, but then you're discouraged again just because it's so tedious to to get some basic operations up and running. And that's exactly why deriving is there. Deriving is supposed to to take that pain away, but still leave you in control. New data types aren't automatically an instance of these classes. You can decide whether you want them to be, but if you want them to be, then it is made relatively easy for you. So let's look at this again, and at first in the context of our often used choice data type. So if we have rock, paper, scissors as a data type, and we start out, then as I said, we start out without any instances. So if I type rock into GHCI, it cannot be printed back because there is no show instance. If I try something like rock equals rock, it will say that there is no EQ instance. If I check whether rock is less than paper, it will say that there is no ORD instance. If I try to say something like the list from rock to scissors, it will say that there is no enum instance. Right? So all these are not there by default, but all these can be derived actually. We cannot just derive show, we can derive all these classes. So we can say um, <clears throat> deriving, and then we can write in this, like often used for class constraints, this, uh, no, this tuple-like syntax, we can actually just list all the classes we want to derive. EQ, ORD, show, and we can actually derive read as well, and we can de derive enum, and we can derive bounded. Um, we can derive all of them for this type. And as you can see, this works without any problems. And now all of a sudden we can do all these things that we couldn't do before. We can uh, type in rock and we get rock printed back. We can ask whether rock is equal to rock and we get true. We can ask whether rock is equal to um, paper and we get false. It's interesting to see what happens if we ask whether rock is smaller than paper and indeed we get true here. The um, idea is that uh, constructors are ordered by the deriving clause in the order in which they actually appear. And um, so because we have written rock first and then paper and then scissors, rock is considered smaller than paper now and paper is considered smaller than scissors, right? Whereas um, if I ask whether paper is smaller than rock, I get false. And this is a general convention 
um, and actually if you ever forget about like for example the ordering between false and true you can generally assume that this kind of of um, uh, convention applies also to uh, library data types because false is listed before true uh, and the instance for ord is supposed uh, for ord of booleans is, is, is supposed to be as systematic as possible false is also considered to be smaller than true um, maybe types are actually ordered um, and because nothing appears before true uh, nothing appears before just it is actually the case that um, also nothing is considered to be smaller than anything constructed by just and so on and so forth. The equality instance deriving is um, as you would expect, right? I mean, uh, uh, values are uh, compared for structural equality. Um, Ordering also automatically uses lexicographical ordering. We have been discussing that when we first discussed ORD as well, that many of the predefined instances are using lexicographic ordering. So as soon as you have data types that have arguments, then lexicographic ordering is used. Show and read are following this convention that they really just use the names of the constructors as you have written them. So if I show rock, right? I get the textual representation that co corresponds directly to the constructor name. And if I read the text rock as a member of type choice, I'll successfully be able to read this back. The enum instance also follows this idea that constructors that are listed first come before constructors that are listed later. So if I do something like rock up to scissors now, I just get all the values. And bounded is also following this convention that namely the first constructor that is being listed is being uh, considered the lower bound now, the min bound. And the last constructor that is listed is considered the upper bound. And indeed, I can also just write something like min bound dot dot max bound of choice, um, of a list of choices, of course, in order to get uh, uh, all the values of such a bounded data type um, enumerated in a list. Or I can even drop off the max bound and say, I want to start at the minimal value and then go on for as long as possible. And then I'll get all the values out. Now, choice is a relatively boring type. So we can try <coughs> the same for a um, uh, for a tree type. So if we uh, use a, a type of trees, like we have uh, seen in some of the exercises already, where um, we have a leaf, uh, that is of type A, or we have a binary node um, that has a left and a right subtree, I can derive similar classes for it. So I can derive EQ and ORD and SHOW and READ, but I cannot derive ENUM or BOUNDED. Let's first look at EQ and ORD and SHOW and READ. So if I type leaf of the character X now, then I just get it printed back and I can compare the leaf X with the leaf Y and that's true. And I can also compare a leaf with a node, but that's never going to that's never going to work. But, I mean that's never going to return true. But I can check whether a leaf is smaller than a node and that is true again because the leaf constructor appears before the node constructor and if we um, derive an ordering for trees then everything that is constructed using the leaf constructor is considered smaller than uh, anything constructed using the node constructor and um, and then we get lexicographical ordering again between things that appear in sequence so let's say we have a node of two leaves, three and three, and we have another um, node and we call the compare function. We have another node of two leaves, 
So then these are considered completely equal. Right. And then if they distinguish, like if they are the same in the first component, but distinguished in the second component, then the second component matters. Right. But if the first component already distinguishes them, then the first component takes dominance. So now the first component of the node and on the left hand side is a leaf four that is greater than a leaf three. So the second component in this case does not matter. So this is exactly the concept of lexicographical ordering again. Um, and the show and the read instances just work as expected, right? I mean, I can take a node um, of, a, of two leaves like this and I can show it. And if I take such a string that is generated by um, the show function and I read it again and I explicitly say that I want to see it as a tree of integers, then it also parses successfully again. I cannot, as I said, derive enum or bound it for these. This will both yield an error because enum and bounded are both classes where the deriving functionality is restricted to pure enumeration types, such as choices, where none of the constructors have any arguments. So um, these classes are out. In general, GHC offers uh, deriving functionality for a limited set of classes. We'll, in the next videos, see a few more classes where you can also use the deriving construct, but there may be an various restrictions imposed on which types exactly you can derive which classes for. Uh, for EQ or show read, these restrictions are relatively modest. So and for most data types, you will be able to derive it. But one thing that may prevent it, for example, is if you explicitly use something within a type for which there is no corresponding instance. So <clears throat> let's, for example, just um, define a type of a wrapped in function and um, give it a one constructor make function and that contains a function from integers to integers. And we've already seen that uh, uh, functions are uh, I mean, they can be made instances of type classes, but they are not an instance of most type classes in practice. So if we start deriving EQ for this, this will give us an error for the EQ class as well. We have to, again, there are, unfortunately, there is quite a bit of noise here, which I think is just coming from Haskell language server in this case. But the decisive error message is, that there is no instance for EQ of int to int. And because there is no instance for EQ of int to int, we can also not derive equality for, um, for this type. Right? And um, similarly, we can't derive ORD. And similarly, we can't derive show because there is no show instance either. And similarly, we can't derive read. So all of these derivations, they fail in this particular case. If you otherwise use things that are of variable type, right, then the derived instances are clever. So we've seen this already in the context of tree. Tree has a parameter. And if we now look at all the instances that we have available for tree. So if you ask for the info on a data type in GHCI, it also, just like for type classes, it typically lists the instances. For data types, it also lists the instances that are in scope. We see that we get these constrained instances derived automatically. So we don't get an instance for show of tree A for any A, but instead we get an instance for show of tree A as long as the A itself is showable. And that is because the A appears here in the arguments of the constructors of tree. And obviously in order to show uh, a tree with some elements, we in general also have to be able to show the elements. And similarly for the ORD and the EQ constraints and the read constraints, yeah, it always appears there as well. Okay. so. 
deriving is useful. Uh, and in most cases, I guess, if you want an instance of uh, any of these classes, then you, uh, you're also uh, uh, probably okay with deriving. There may be a, a few situations where you still want to give your own instance for these classes, where you want to deviate from the uh, standard uh, structure. But you should always be careful with that and um, have a good justification for it. But it can, for example, have something to do with the data type having certain invariants and, um, and you maintaining these invariants properly and saying that um, because you have certain invariants, certain components of the data type are only additional uh, information that is being used internally for, um, and they um, are need, they're not needed to be compared for equality because they're additionally uh, maintained cached data that are like uniquely determined by the other components of a data structure. So traversing them all and comparing them for equality is just unnecessary work. That may be a, uh, a justification to give a deviating equality instance, right, for example. Um, yes. Okay, so um, in, the, in the next video, we're going to look at um, uh, a number of additional classes that are also important in Haskell. Uh, and they are different in the sense that they are um, classes that are parameterized over uh, type constructors, that is over types that are themselves parameterized. Um, uh, we'll see what that means, and uh, in particular, we're going to look at the functor and at the foldable class.